Hi, Dan Willingham, back with you for the second of five videos on the cognition that underlies reading. Today I want to talk about what goes into decoding and why some kids find it difficult. And a good place to start is with exactly that question, what goes into decoding? In the first video, I emphasized that reading comprehension is really based on oral language comprehension. And that seems to fit well with an obvious fact about decoding. Writing is a code for spoken language. So we've got letters and groups of letters that are associated with sound. And that highlights a complexity that seems like it's probably going to be behind the problem that some kids have with learning decoding, namely that the mapping is many to many. It would be a whole lot easier to learn how to decode if one letter always went with one sound and vice versa. But of course, we know that's not true in, in uh, English. Uh, so, sound like E can be spelled in many different ways, as in the words peace and read, beware, body, hear, ceiling, all spelled different ways. And then likewise, the complexity goes in the other direction. So when you've got a spelling like O-U-G-H, the pronunciation is uncertain. It might be uff, it might be off, or o, or ow, oo, aw, or most perversely, up. Now that aspect of decoding is really striking, but the truth is the brain is not that bad at learning auditory and visual associations. This is the same type of association that goes into learning people's names. I've got a visual stimulus, a face, and that it becomes associated with an auditory stimulus, the sound of the person's name. But there's a piece of that learning that I breezed over, and that's the piece that can be hard. It's the hearing of individual speech sounds that go into those letter sound associations. That's what can be really hard. We don't seem to be born naturally able to hear individual speech sounds. We can hear syllables, but not individual speech sounds. How do we know that? Well, we test adults who have never learned how to read. Uh, to see whether or not they can do this. So the way you can test it is to ask them to uh, perform a task that requires hearing individual speech sounds and doing a little bit of manipulation. So for example, you say take the word stop, remove the s, and tell me what you've got left over. Adults who never learned how to read are probably not going to be able to do that, but they'll have no trouble with a similar task um, that requires a manipulation of syllables rather than individual speech sounds. So take the word hiccup, remove the sound hick, and now tell me what you've got left over. Now another aspect of this problem is that when we talk about hearing individual speech sounds, uh, uh, it, it sounds like the individual speech sounds are always going to be the same because that's the way we think about letters. What does the letter P go with? Well, they, I mean, it always goes with the same sound, right? But it really doesn't. One problem is that across individuals, people um, pronounce things differently. There are, there are accents, regional accents and, and accents associated with countries. Um, so a letter string like uh, uh, that spells out tomato doesn't always have the same sound because some people pronounce it tomato. That's one small problem, but a much bigger problem is that even within an individual, the same letter is pronounced differently depending on the context. So uh, I mentioned the letter P. Here's an example using the letter P. Put your mouth, uh, your hand in front of your mouth and say the word pot, pot. You feel the little puff of air when you say the P sound that goes with, in, uh, starts pot. Now do the same thing and say spot, spot. You feel a puff of air again, but it's much weaker than it was uh, in the case of pot. So you're saying the, uh, uh, the P sound differently depending on the context of the word. The reason that's important is that we're of course not telling children that the sound associated with this letter P is going to be different depending on the context. We're telling the child that it's always going to be the same. So the auditory stimulus that the child is perceiving has a lot of variability associated with it, both because people pronounce it differently depending on their accents, and then within an individual, people pronounce it differently depending on the context of the word. But we're pretending that it always makes exactly the same sound. 
So that's another reason that hearing individual speech sounds is difficult. So the many-to-many -many association business, the, the business about there being lots of ways of uh, spelling the sound E and the fact that O-U-G-H can be associated with lots of different sounds, uh, that's easy to appreciate that that's going to make learning how to decode difficult. That's probably the smaller problem, though, that many-to-many -many, uh, mapping problem. The larger problem, the reason that uh, uh, kids are likely to have difficulty if they're going to have difficulty is the hearing of individual speech sounds. Next time uh, we'll look not at sound in decoding but we'll look at spelling and decoding and what that contributes to reading.